Now, time rolled around after we had met everybody, from the auntie all the way down to the great grandbaby. But it was still a missing piece. We were not adopted. We were not official. So it wasn't like, oh, they're mine, they're this or that, because we still have to check into the state. Now, the court dates start rolling around. I remember verbatimly going to court and the judge was saying, hey, where's their mom? Where's their dad? Like, why are we here if the people we're here arguing with or whatever is not showing up? Now, let me explain. When you're going through the court process, there are certain proceedings that have to happen. They give the biological parents time to figure out whatever it is that they need to do to retain custody of us and carry on with our married lives. Now, one thing I did remember was a lot of the times we went to court, our parents never even showed up. So it was just reset after reset after reset. And eventually, the caseworker that we had, Miss Tammy, shout out to you, girl, if you're watching this. She was just like, hey, we can go ahead and file for a motion. If y'all feel like y'all really want to adopt them, we can go ahead and see what we can do to get the judge to exemplify and sign off on this request. So, of course, at our next court date, Miss Tammy said whatever it was that she said with the lawyer that the state assigned to us. And the judge was just like, we're going to give them another opportunity to show up to court. Now, they're not going to force you to come to court. But I know if you don't show up, then the judge can rule in the favor of the defendant. So, boom, court date was pushed back another three months. We showed up. When we showed up, we saw our parents the next time. So as we're walking through at this point, we're so connected to our foster family that we don't even acknowledge that our biological parents are standing there. When we go into the courtroom, the first thing the judge says after they do all their form formalities and things of that nature was, uh, did you take your classes? Did you go get your certification? Did you do A, B, C, X, Y, and Z? And she always had an excuse. So with those excuses, the judge grew more and more aggravated. Not only have we been pushing these court cases back, when you finally decide to show up, the things that we told you you needed to do when your kids were taken away from you, you still have yet to do them. So in the mix of all that arguing, one thing I did remember was my mom's stomach was a little bit round. So at the time, mind you, Chris was in foster care. It was just me and Amber at the time wondering, so you put us in the system or allowed us to go to the system, but yet you're pregnant with another child? Interesting. Quite naturally, my mom gave the response of, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. I promise it'll be done by the time the next court date rolls around. whoop de whoop de whoop So the judge gave her one final opportunity and told us court was adjourned and he would see us back in six months. After court was adjourned, we noticed that our parents were trying to get a little bit of affection from us. Our foster parents was not going to force us to go over there and hug that woman. You done put us through this much turmoil, all these different homes, all these different problems, and you just now want to show up, missing visitations and all of that to give us a hug? And walking out of the courtroom, we jump into the vehicle with our foster parents. When we get in, we buckle our seatbelts. They take us to McDonald's. We order our favorite meal, chicken nugget happy meals, and they bought us ice cream cones for dessert. So we jump on Highway 59 and we head home. Once we get home, we get out of the car, we go in, we change our clothes, and we chilling out for the rest of the day. Now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward six months to our next court date. We show back up to court in our best dress fits. When we get there, our parents are there before us, surprisingly. We walk in, they go ahead and do their formalities, and the judge shoot off at my mom. Did you go ahead and get your, your qualifications done? Did you get your certifications? Did you get all the necessary things done on that checklist, that CPS, required for you to do when we took your children from you? And just like before, she had an excuse. But not only did she have an excuse, she was even more pregnant than when we first saw her. Now, I know for a fact the attorney we had, the court administrators, the judge, hell, even the bailiff was tired of the BS that was going on. Why do you keep giving this woman chance after chance after chance for obviously custody that she does not want? My foster father took it upon himself to stand up. He had his cane in front of him. He was like, Your Honor, if you don't mind, is there any way we can go ahead and adopt them? Now, of course, the judge shut it down, which is like, hey, there are formalities we have to go against. There are questions that need to be asked. There are records that have to be taken before we can jump into this term. But even in the mix of the judge saying what he said, I could tell he was eyeballing my mom because she's over there like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Taking the responsibility off. So the judge looked back at my father and was just like, are you sure that's what you want to do, Mr. Hodge? And he stood up there, 10 toes down, stiff in the chest. Yes, sir. And I'd like to give him my last name. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. That's nothing I can control. You'll have to go down there to the third floor, fill out an application, and they'll handle it from there. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, the judge told the bailiff to allow me and my sister to come up there and stand behind the podium with him. When we got up there, he looked my mom in the face and was just like, are you sure this is what you want to do to them? Are you looking them in their face saying that you no longer want custody of your children? Now, instead of my mom giving the man a yes and no answer like a full grown adult, she just looked 
shrugged her shoulders. He was like, so are you telling me that you do not want custody of your children again? And she still had no answer. Like, bitch, open your mouth. All you got to do is say no. We know what you insinuated, but we need to hear you say it. So still with no answer coming from this lady's mouth, the judge turned to my father. He was just like, Mr. Hodge, I'm going to go ahead and grant you custody. If you want to adopt them, we'll get the legal paperwork and things of that nature sorted out with Child Protective Services. But as far as you, he said whatever it was that he said to my mom and she walked out of the courtroom. Now, I know y'all going to say, oh, it don't go like that. Oh, it don't go like that. All the information I'm giving you, I've gotten from my parents or I got from being nosy in that big ass box of CPS paperwork. A few weeks had passed and Miss Tammy had showed up to the house. We were thinking she was showing up with the paperwork that was needed in order to go before the judge in order to sign our custody rights over to the Hodges. Now, when she walked in, according to my mom, my mom was told that my biological mom was pregnant with my little brother and she asked if she wanted to adopt him as well. Now, of course, they had their own little conversation between husband and wife and it came out to, yeah, we'll take him. I kid you not. We were at the hospital the day my mom went into labor. She gave birth, my mom left the hospital, and Bradley came with us. Now let me give you a little backstory on my mom. This is how Bradley came about. So my mom had me and my sister by my dad, Eric, Eric Sr. Then she turned around and got a job as a waitress and she met this Australian man. The Australian man tipped her $100 and she went and slept with the man, got pregnant with him, blamed the baby on my father, and turned around and named Bradley Eric Jr. But here's the kicker. Eric Jr. is my baby brother, who lives right down the street from me, who just turned 17. You see what I'm saying? You see the, 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 the deceivement and all of this? But that's, that's nothing. I just have to tell you that. After the 48-hour mandatory stay for newborn babies that are in the hospital with no deformalities, defects, or anything of that sort, my parents were allowed to get Bradley. Now you got all three of us in the bunch. It is officially time to sign paperwork to seal the deal on these kids. So we go before the judge, the judge goes over all the paperwork, boom, we get the stamp, we get the seal. The judge congratulates us on whatever progress it was that they did and our parents take us down to the third floor. When we get there, he asks the lady behind the window, hey, can I get an application? I'm trying to change my children's names and give them our last name. Now, at the time, it was only $500 a child to change our name, so it was $1,500. I go from Alexia to Sherelle, Amber goes from Carolyn to Amber, and my brother goes from Eric Jr. to Bradley Lee. And of course, we all got the last name Hodge. So all you Hodges out there, we cousins by paperwork, but not by blood. Quite naturally, I'm a Davis. So after the deal was sealed, we got to say our goodbyes to Miss Tammy. We got to say our goodbyes to the attorney. Hell, we even got to take a picture with the judge. Now that wasn't the end of Miss Tammy because she still had to keep a foul on us up to a year after we were adopted. So we still saw her every other weekend. It even slowed down to sometimes once a month over the course of a year. But at the end of it, she congratulated our parents. She gave us a hug and was just like, hey, if y'all ever need me, I'm here. There is no need to call like the CPS, da, 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 da. I'm here, I guess outside of her job. I actually love Miss Tammy. Shout out to you, girl. To click the link in my bio, this book right here, the first one, that's where this story came from. It talks a little more in detail about how our life was after we were adopted. But hey, it's life. Growing up Hodge is underway.